Hi everybody, welcome back to Cheat 3. Today we have a puzzle box that can have a gift card inside of it right here. Um, so this particular box has a few Frankenbrick pieces, which I'll show you before we start, and also several unusual pieces, which I will also show you. Um, I don't want you to get started building and then realize you don't have those pieces. So these three pieces need to be Frankenbricked. Um, essentially on this one by three plate, we're just going to cut off the edge, something like that. On this two by two corner plate, we are going to remove both of the under tubes and then that um, side support at the 90 degree corner. And then on this one by three tile, we will remove both of the under tubes on that. Um, in terms of the unusual pieces, here they are. So this, the, probably the biggest one is the differential gear. And this is part number 6573. And it is a 24 tooth on this side and a 16 tooth on that side. And it needs these three, um, they call them bevel gears. Um, and the part number on this one is 6589. So it's a 12, a 12 tooth bevel gear. Um, it needs two length four axles, one with a stopper and one without. Two length five axles, again, one with a stopper, one without. Um, it needs these two gears too. These are eight tooth gears, part number 3647. It needs this gear. This one is a 16 tooth gear. And its part number is 94925. It needs two of these one by four gears, a three by three cross. This isn't that unusual of a part. It's a one by four with um, a, like a tile in the middle and then the studs on the outside, but this box has several of these. Um, this Technic stopper piece and this ball joint Technic piece. This one is part number 32474. So those are kind of the unusual pieces in our gift card box puzzle box. So if you don't have those, I recommend going on to BrickLink and ordering them or going to our Etsy page and just purchasing the box outright. All right, I will get started with full tutorial. Okay, the starting base is going to be two six by eight plates. These are one by six plates, a one by one plate, and a one by eight plate. And we are just going to push all of these together. And as you can see with our gift card, that allows uh, the gift card to sit in the middle and then a row of plates all the way around. And this particular size, just how big the gift card is, isn't great for Lego because you end up having to add an extra row. It would have been much better if it could just fit on one of their plates. So instead of eight, it's nine. Um, and then, let's see. And then instead of 12 across, it's 13. So again, we're gonna have to uh, build up some layers to try to get that support, but that's just the nature of what the size of the gift card is. Um, so that's the base layer. And then to build up some support, we have this four by 12 plate. This one is going to sit right here. And you wanna make sure you're pushing these in as much as you can. Um, I should also note that this box is super easy to cheat off of. So if you don't want your recipient to be able to just kind of break the puzzle apart and get the gift card straight out, you may want to consider glue for this puzzle. And that's up to you. I'm not going to use glue, um, but that's your choice. This one by three colored plate goes here. And then this one is a one by 12 or one by 10. That's a one by 10. And then these one by fours sit on both sides. 
All right, the next layer I have a one by four plate and another one by four plate. This one by two plate. And then this is a one by 10 plate, a one by eight plate, and a one by one plate. All right, the next row has several one by six tiles and then a few other tiles, some two by four, uh, a uh, two by two and a one by two. So I'll start with these two by fours. Those are just going to set up against that row of plates we added. All these one by six tiles are just going to be placed on this portion of the base. That's the dark purple and then two more whites. So make sure all this is pressed in nice and firm. And we're ready for the next layer. Okay, next we have a one by eight plate. These both are one by six plates, a one by one plate, and then a one by eight plate. And now we're going to take this uh, base portion and just set it aside for now. We'll use this at the very end. Okay, for the next layer, we have the six by eight plate and we're going to push it up against a one by six plate and then a four by six plate. We'll push that there, a one by three plate. And then we're going to leave two spaces here and put this one by three plate there, a one by two plate and a one by four plate. Um, then we have a six by eight plate, and this is going to sit right here connecting those bottom pieces. Those ones kind of flew out on me. Um, and then I have a one by six plate and a two by six plate. Those go there. This one by four plate is going to sit here. And then I have this four by eight plate. This sits here. And then a one by three plate, that's just connected by that end piece and a one by six plate. So it should have a space there. And right now this is pretty flimsy, but we'll work on securing it later. And then just make sure all of this is pressed in nice and firmly. Okay, next, um, I'm gonna start with these two by four tiles. I'm gonna leave a space here. And this one goes there. And this one here. And then in this corner here, I have a one by one tile. And a one by one plate next to it. And then a two by two plate above those. A one by two tile here, a two by four tile there and a one by four plate there. And then these are three uh, one by four tiles. This white one is going to sit next to that plate like that. And then this white one, we're going to leave a stud and that one goes up. And then again, leave another stud and this one goes up. So it's kind of like a little stair stop there. Okay, next I have a one by four plate. That one goes here. And directly above that one, I have this two by four tile. Right next to that, a one by four tile. And then I have these one by one tiles like this. So it's important to leave those two studs um, empty. You don't want that to be a tile all the way across, otherwise your puzzle won't work. So it kind of makes this C type shape. Um, and then this two by four plate, this one goes here. And if we need to just kind of push from the bottom, that's totally fine. Uh, now, this row mostly has bricks, but it has one plate. So I'm gonna start with the plate. It's another one by four plate stacked on top of that last one. This is a two by two corner brick. That one goes here and another. This one sits here. In this space here, we have a one by six brick, um, a one by four brick, 
a one by one on the end, a one by six brick here. Building up the next row, we have a one by one plate, this modified one by four plate with two studs, and then another one by one plate here, a one by three tile, and a one by four plate, a one by two plate there. This two by two corner plate will kind of secure those two sides together. Um, this is a two by two tile. It's going to sit flush with the edge of the box and then that part hangs inside of the box. A one by two plate. And then this two by two plate sits on the last one and it's the same for this one by one plate. Next we have uh, these two one by two plates. Those sit there. This one by one brick is going to sit here and then a two by two tile there, a one by six plate here, a one by two brick, a two by two corner brick here. Um, this two by three brick kind of sits in that cavity there. And then this one by two brick is going to sit here. We're going to leave one, two, three spots um, and then it sits there. there. There's a spot for a one by two brick here that's missing right now. All right, just a few pieces on this row. We have a one by two plate, a one by one tile. This is in the dark pink. And then this one by two plate sits halfway on this side and uh, halfway on that yellow tile like that. And then we have this one by one plate this one sits right here on this one to the second stud. Next, we're going to build up a button. Um, it's going to start with this lime two by three plate. We're going to stack another plate on top. And then on top of that, I have a one by one tile in dark azure and a one by one tile in white. This two by two corner plate and a one by one tile there. Next, this two by two corner plate is going to stack on top of that last one. And then this one by three plate is going to line up flush with that side and extend one on this side. Um, and then this one by one plate sits here. Next, we have this two by two corner plate it's going to sit like that again with that part extending a one by one tile on that side and then we will top it off with a two by two corner tile like this and all of this is going to sit right there so this layer here is going to sit down a level from the plates on its right and left side next we're going to lock it in with this one by one plate a one by four plate and this one by eight plate that kind of secures that button in place um, this one by three brick is going to sit here in this cavity and then i have a one by three plate a one by two plate in white and then this is dark turquoise a one by two plate and a one by eight plate Next, I have a one by two plate here. And then this is a one by two tile. I'm using this um, birthday invitation one with the balloons. The balloons will be the part that extends. If you don't have this piece, it's not a problem to use at any other tile, um, any other one by two tile. Um, this is a one by six plate, a one by four plate, this one by three plate is going to sit here. Now all of this is on one level. And then a one by three brick, that one goes here. And again, you may need to just kind of press from the bottom, making sure all of that is nice and snug. This is a two by four plate. This one is going to go here. And then this one by three plate there, a one by six plate, 
And then again, this is one of those one by four modified pieces with two studs. That goes here. And then this dark turquoise one, uh, that's a one by two plate that sits here. Then we have this two by four plate in yellow. This one evens up this whole area here to be the same height. And then we have two one by one plates in white. One sits here and then one is going to sit on that stud there. So now those um, two studs are at the same height. It's a little bit difficult to see on this mat, but these are the one by four gears. Um, and we are going to push this two by two corner plate and this one by two plate together, put that on top like this. And then this one is going to get a one by one azure tile. And then same for this one, a one by two plate with a two by two corner plate. Put the gear on top of that. And then this tile, this is a coral color tile on this one. So the one with the coral tile is going to sit here, kind of right where that um, two by two corner brick is. And the one with the azure blue color tile is going to sit right like that. So this one will be flush with the edge of the box. Now I'm just going to put this portion of the puzzle aside for now. We will be working on the differential gear. Okay, for the first step of the differential gear, I wanna find that middle prong and I'm just going to put one of my um, beveled gears in there on top of that. And it should just spin freely for now. Um, it's very important that your 24 gears or your 24 teeth are on this side and your 16 are on this side. I had made one where I did it the other way and once it's glued, it's very difficult to remove. On my right side, I have the 24 tooth side. It's very important that this is on this side because once this is glued, it's stuck. Um, so I'm going to place another one of these gears to line up with this hole and to match up with the teeth on this gear. So I'm just gonna hold that there for now. And I need my one by four axle without the stopper and this yellow stopper piece. And I'm going to glue this because if this piece gets pulled out of the puzzle, it is very difficult to fix it. You essentially have to rebuild the entire puzzle. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on each of the sides. Just a little bit is enough. So I got that side and now a little on this side. And I'm going to position this from the inside making sure that my uh, 24 gear is on, or the 24 teeth is on that side, and then insert the axle from this side and just push it in, making sure that it's flush with the end of that yellow um, stopper. And then if you need to take some sort of tool, whatever it is, uh, let's just say, uh, a plate here to kind of make sure that it's flush and remove any excess glue, uh, you can do that. You don't want the axle to extend past that yellow stopper. And then just rotate it to make sure that everything is turning as you like. Uh, the glue shouldn't prevent, it shouldn't glue this gear to this one. That would be a no-no. <laughs> It can, it can attach the yellow stopper to that gear, as uh, to this bevel gear, as long as everything still spins freely. So once we have this, we are going to move on to our next step. All right, so the next step, we are going to take our one by four axle, this time with the stopper, thread it through 
Um, this gear, that one is an eight tooth gear. And then have this one by four Technic brick, thread it through this last hole on there. And then we want to line up this bevel gear on that side of our differential gear, the side, the smaller side that has 16 teeth, and just kind of hold it all in place while we connect all of this. Um, okay. So we want to make sure that in the center here, that this black axle is not touching that dark gray one, which they are not. Um, you want to make sure that this whole thing can spin, which it does. And then one other little bit of troubleshooting is you don't want this gear to be so close to this brick that it has trouble moving. So I'm just gonna space it out just a little bit to give it a little bit of room on this side here. Okay, then now that we have that, we are going to take these one by two Technic bricks, put them together, and put this two by three plate over top and connect it to this one by four Technic brick like this. Um, then we want to thread through this one by five axle with the stopper thread that through here. You may have to kind of line it up with this first. And then on this side of it, we are going to put our eight tooth gear right like that. Okay, and to finish off our differential gear, I have another one by two Technic brick. I'm going to put that on this side. And then we have our ball joint here on the end like that. Um, and all of this is going to be placed into the box right here. So the space that we have there, that's where this ball joint is going to sit in. And then we just want to make sure that these are pushed all the way in and press everything down firmly. Um, and when I spin it, it should move this gear with the blue color tile. Um, as you can see, if I pulled out this uh, ball joint and this whole axle pulled out, now that bevel gear, gear falls off and the puzzle is unworkable until all of that is replaced. Um, so definitely glue that one or make sure your recipient does not pull this axle out from the box. Next, we have a two by four plate. It's going to sit partially over that gear and then partially on those studs like this. And then a two by two plate is going to sit here. We're going to leave a space and then this one sits on that side. Okay, and then that takes us to the space here. If you want, you can use a one by two plate and just put it right like that. Um, it's not our favorite at Cheat 3 just because we like our pieces to not fall out and this stopper here will provide a piece of resistance that will not allow gravity to extend a part that's not ready to be extended yet. Um, so we definitely prefer the one by three, but if you're against franken breaking your pieces, just use a one by two there. I believe the instructions on Rebrickable have both options. All right, so you want to make sure it's this corner here so that when this piece sits in there, this is the corner that we're taking off. We're not um, going to have this piece bump up against that axle or the gear. So once we, cut straight down. Now we can put this piece right here and this all turns very freely without any resistance. If that's still touching, you may need to take 
a little bit more off of that edge there. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is have a two by two corner plate and a one by one plate. This one by one tile is going to sit on this little part over here. And then if I push those two together, this two by two corner brick is going to sit on top of that. And then this whole piece is going to sit right behind that black gear sandwiched right in there like that. This piece right here. All right, next I have a two by four plate, a one by four plate, a one by three plate, and a two by three plate. And I'm going to push all those together. And then this is a two by two corner plate. This, uh, another one by four modified plate is going to connect those two together. And then on this part there, I want a one by one round. I forgot to lay that piece out, um, but that's what's, oh, here's one. That is going to go there. It looks like this, it's a tile and it's going to sit right there. And then this two by four plate sits there. We have this two by two corner plate and it's going to extend off the edge. And then the same for this, it's a one by four plate. It's going to sit flush with those three um, tiles, or sorry, those three plates, and then sit over the edge on that last one. All right, next I have my piece here. I'm going to stack these one by one round plates and put them here. This may be a spot where you want to glue just because um, it does get a little bit of torque and you know it's just sitting on that single stud. Then you have this two by four plate that goes here, a one by three plate, a one by four plate in yellow, a one by two plate, a one by one tile, and a one by one plate. Then we have these two one by six plates, sorry, these are one by six tiles. Um, and then a one by two tile in the light bright orange. We're going to leave those two studs alone. And this one sits on those two studs and again, extends one length. Okay, and then to top this off, we want this two by two corner uh, tile to sit on top of that one. And then we're ready for our next Frankenbrick piece. It's this uh, one by three tile. We're going to turn it over, grab our needle nose pliers, grab a hold of the stud, kind of rock back and forth and pull that little um, under tube out. Do the same thing on that bottom one. And then there's still a little bit of residual of the under tube plastic on there. So I like to just grab it and then kind of rock back and forth to try to remove any excess uh, plastic that's still in there. And this kind of just scrapes at it so that it's all removed. Um, and then you also want to see if your tile has little side ridges. There's usually two or three on these tiles. This one doesn't, so I'm kind of lucky. Um, but if it does have that, just kind of take your knife and very carefully remove those side ridges if your tile has them. Um, and then this tile is going to sit here on those two studs and just make sure it can slide cleanly and consistently across those two studs. So this whole piece is going to sit right in here. Make sure this is pressed in all the way and it's going to just slide in right like that. Um, next, we have this two by two corner plate and these one by three plates. I'm going to stack those plates on top of each other, put them flush with this end here and extending on that end there. Um, next, this one by two tile sits flush with this side, but extends in this direction. And then I have a one by one plate in red and sorry, this is a tile, a one by one tile in red and a one by two tile in azure. 
uh, the medium azure color. And then I'm going to turn this around and this is going to sit in the box right like that. And at this point, we can push in this tile just like that. And to top off this portion of the puzzle, I have another one by two tile. And this is going to sit against that resistor piece that we trimmed down and on that stud here. So it's gonna go over top of this one, sitting on that white one by one round piece. Okay, this row has several pieces. Uh, this is a one by eight plate. This one goes here, and then a one by six plate there. We have several one by threes in this layer, one of which goes here. Um, and then in this cavity here, sitting on that single stud only, and is another one by three plate right there. And then this one by three plate sitting on that single stud is this one uh, right here. Then this two by two plate sits there. This one by three plate here, a one by six plate, a one by one plate, a one by three plate. And then this here, I have uh, two of these two by four plates. If you have a four by four, that also works there. A one by two plate here. I'm going to leave one stud and then put this one by two tile there. Okay, and then I have a two by three plate here and a two by six plate right there. And then this one by eight plate, it's going to sit on this stud over top of that uh, lime colored tile on those three studs and on this stud. That one goes across all of those like that. Next, we have this one by three plate. That one goes here. A two by two tile there. A two by two plate. A one by four plate. A two by four plate. And then I have a one by one plate in the dark azure. A one by four plate. Another one by four plate. And then this one by two, or sorry, this one by one plate sits on that second stud in. And then on this spot here, those two plates, or uh, those two studs, I'm going to put this one by two tile. And then I have another one of these modified one by fours. This one sits right there. The next step is going to start with this one by six plate. That one goes here. And then I have another one of these modified one by fours. It's going to sit on this stud, span across that gear and rest on that other stud like this. And then on this stud, we have a one by one plate, then a one by three tile and a one by one tile there. Um, then we have our two by two corner plate another one by six plate. And then on these three studs, we have our one by three plate. Next, we have our one by one plate on the end. And then this one by two pink plate, that one sits like that. Next, this one by one brick is going to sit in that spot where we left a space. Um, and then I have a two by three plate and I'm going to put this two by two corner plate on top and this two by two corner tile on that side. And we're going to find the three studs beneath. Um, it is kind of if you look to the side on this spot here and you follow that straight back, we're going to align this side. Let's see if you can see like that. So this is what it looks like on the inside and then we're going to align it right like that. 
And this piece does go up and down, so it's fine if you see a little bit of movement there. Okay, so building off of what we just finished here, I have another two by two corner plate and it's going to sit on these two studs, overhang on that tile and kind of wrap around that brick. This one goes here and then a one by one plate sits on that other stud there. Um, next I have this one by six plate. This is going to sit on that stud and kind of rest over top of all of those other tiles. And the same thing for this one. It's going to sit on these two studs and rest on those other tiles. And then in that blank space there, I need a one by one plate. And then to secure everything in, I have a two by four plate, a one by two plate, and a two by two corner plate. Next, we're going to just lock everything in further with some tiles. I have a one by two magenta tile. That one sits on this stud kind of on the side of the box. And then a one by one medium azure on that little one by one part that juts out, a two by four tile and a two by two tile. Next, we have a one by four plate. This one goes right here next to that magenta tile. And then a two by four plate goes here by that uh, light bright pink one. And then a one by six plate that sits partially on that yellow tile and partially on the studs on this side. And then I have two one by one tiles. The lime one sits right here. And then I have a magenta one by one tile and that one sits here. Okay, next I have this four by four plate. That one goes on the end here. And a one by four plate next to it and a two by three plate next to that. And then this two by two corner plate goes there. A one by four plate here. And in that cavity, a one by one plate. Okay, next I have a one by six plate. That one goes there. A one by two plate. Another one by two in red. A two by two. And a one by four. A one by one. I'm going to wait on these two here. I have a one by four plate and a two by four plate. Um, they're gonna go here, but I want to attach them with this piece. And then this is a two by four plate that goes there, a one by three plate, and a one by two plate. And then along this edge here, I have a one by three plate and a one by six plate, a one by two, and a two by two corner plate. Um, so this piece here is going to sit right like that. And so I am going to connect this one like that. That was the two by four onto the four by eight. And then this one by four is going to go there. And then all of this is going to connect just like that. Next, I have a one by four plate here, another one here and then a two by eight plate here, a two by three plate there, a two by four plate here, and then a one by one right there, and then in this spot, a two by two corner plate. All right, next we have a bunch of tiles for the top. Um, I'm gonna start with this one by six tile there and I actually need uh, one of these a one by one medium azure tile then I have a one by two tile a two by two and in this spot there that's where I'm going to put that one by one plate um, next is another two by two tile and another one a one by two tile here and two one by three tiles. 
This coral one is going to sit on the end like that. Then I have a space there and then a one by three tile here, a one by two tile and a one by four, a two by four. And then this one by two is going to go there. A one by six tile, a one by four. And then for this two by four, it's actually going to line up with that one by four. Um, so I'm lining it up on this side and that, because that's only three long, it's going to overhang one like that. And then I have a one by two and a one by one there and a one by three next to those. And then in this spot, I have a jumper. Um, this one by four tile goes here and a one by one here in the light bright orange. All right, this is the other Franken brick piece. Um, I have a two by two corner plate and essentially I need to remove the two under tubes and then that little side uh, at the 90 degree edge, that little side piece there. And then if there are any side ridges on the inside, which it doesn't appear that this one has any, um, but if it does have some, you'll need to remove those on yours. So I'm going to position my needle nose pliers above the under tube, squeeze it together, and then remove that piece. Do the same on this one. And then for this piece, I'm just going to find where it connects, cut straight down and get that little piece out. It's just a small piece there. Um, and then, like I said, I like to kind of grab and see if there is any more residual plastic. I'm sorry if this is shaking the camera. I'm just grabbing it like that and then kind of using the metal from the pliers to smooth out um, that surface there. And then the same on this side. Looks like I need to remove just a little more of that side one. I didn't quite get it all the way down. Okay. And so we have this piece now and we're going to position that one by one above it. And then I have another one of these, your favorite. And it's going to sit flush on this side and overhang one on that side. Like that. This tile goes there and these two plates sit on those studs like that. Okay, next I'm going to take this piece, set it on that stud there. So this side is going to sit all the way flush up against this edge and I press straight down. Um, and then we have this piece here. This one's going to sit on those three studs and then partially over this. And then this one will sit on that jumper. And this white one will sit right here. And then this is a one by two plate and it's going to sit on this stud and then overhang onto that tile. And because it only has the one stud it's going to sit on, I'm just gonna glue it just a little bit. I wanna make sure I don't get any glue on that magenta um, tile there. Just a little bit, just to keep this one in place. And this is going to go just like that. And then if you wanna test this to make sure um, it can move properly, we're going to push it up and then slide it over. If it can't make those two movements, you need to um, redo or just take a little bit more off of that two by two corner plate. Next I have a one by three plate. It's going to sit on this stud and then reach up until that coral tile like that. And then this two by two corner plate sits here. 
Um, and this one by three plate for now is just going to rest right like that. And we are going to secure it with this um, three by three cross piece. Um, and it's going to sit just like this so that this piece of the cross connects with that middle stud of that one by three. All right, next I have a one by one plate. This is going to sit on this right side of that one by two that we glued right here. And then we are going to put on several tiles. I have an orange one by one tile, a yellow, a light bright orange, a dark pink, a lime, and then this one by one plate is going to sit right in the middle. I have a medium azure on top. And then on these four studs, I'm going to put these one by one sloped pieces. And I'm just going to position them to make it look as much like a bow as what we can. So we have that. Okay, we're going to finish off the top with just some tiles. This one by one tile goes there. And then over here we have a dark purple one to complete the bow. And then this outside stud gets another white. Um, so this is the top portion of our puzzle. And next we need to put in the gift card and connect it to the bottom. Okay, so next we need to take a one by two plate and connect it on this outermost side um, underneath that lime one. And then just press everything in nice and tight. We can at this point put our gift card in. Um, if you don't wanna put the gift card in there, say you buy it from us and it's already assembled, um, we will just connect this. So I have my lime knob over here and I have this coral piece on this side and I'm just going to position this right on top like that and it'll leave a space here. And then it also leaves this space here. So this is where if you buy it from us or if you've glued it, you can put the gift card in this side and it is kind of a tight fit. You need something sharp to kind of help push it in the rest of the way. And then we have our gift card box, Lego puzzle box. Um, it's ready to be solved and I don't know if you can see it, but we have our gift card in there and it's ready to go. I'm super excited for you guys to give this gift card box to your friends and family. If you have a fun story that you'd like to share with how everything went, uh, post it in the comments. G3 out.